How's it going everyone? Major Rushmore here and in this video I'm going to do an unboxing and a review of the NetDuma R1 gaming router. Uh, I've been hearing quite a lot of chatter on the internet over the last couple of weeks, last month maybe, about this revolutionary new gaming router that's supposed to uh, dominate lag as they say. Um, it's built for gamers, made by gamers, all of that. It, it, it doesn't do just gaming, it looks after everything in the house but it's optimized to work with gaming and PlayStations, Xboxes, PCs, whatever. So I suffer tremendously with lag. You know, I've, I've been explaining it. I've been telling you about it. I've been ranting and, and giving out about it for the last, I don't know how long, ever since my channel was first conceived. So hopefully this will connect my uh, lag problems or help alleviate them because, you know, my, my biggest problem is that my broadband provider just does not have a quality connection for me. My traffic is routed through the US back around through Europe and then back into Dublin like you know what I mean it's it's crazy such a big long round trip but I'm hoping that the NetDuma R1 gaming router is going to uh, help me with that this is the box itself I'll do a close up now in a second in the next section of this video but I'm really looking forward to getting it set up and trying it out I haven't done so yet um, it's now Saturday I ordered the device on uh, last uh, Sunday night uh, in, uh, I was on one of my last videos, one of my um, subscribers had left a comment saying that I should get one. And I was that enraged, much enraged with the lag and all that, that I said it with all the chatter that I had heard that I would actually go and get one. So with that comment, I went bang there and then and I bought it. So Prophecy of Ace, if you're watching, thanks very much for the recommendation. I was going to get one anyway, but I would just say that you helped me, you helped push it over the line for me. So I uh, can't wait to get stuck into it. Um, yeah, I ordered it last Sunday night. Uh, I chose the DHL uh, next day priority delivery, uh, paid quite a, a substantial figure for the delivery. It cost me 27 euro for that delivery uh, and the device is coming from the UK. But unfortunately uh, there was a hiccup with DHL and uh, it didn't arrive until today which is six days later. You know, I was kind of frustrated over that but I contacted NetDuma when I knew it was late and they had provided me with a tracking number anyway. And I was able to track it and I could see that it had left, as soon as I ordered it, they, they, they shipped it out over to Ireland. And it was DHL cocked up and uh, left me with such a massive delay. So what happened was I contacted NetDuma and their CEO contacted me and told me, explained to me what was going on and apologizes refutedly. And, um, you know, said this is absolutely unbelievable. He, it's it's a terrible um Terrible service from DHL. We uh, we're going to get to the bottom of it, and uh, I I just I just loved that fact that their CEO was hands on in dealing with it and got the problem resolved, got to the bottom of it. He gave me a refund for the for the extra charge that I had to pay that I paid for the next day delivery, which didn't happen. So he refunded that to me, and I thanked him for that. Uh, I told him I was going to do an unboxing and a review. So uh, guys, if you're watching, uh, I can't wait to get stuck into it, and I hope it's going to work for me. Next section of this video, I'm going to. Uh, set it up, uh, or I'm going to do. I'm going to do the actual unboxing, and then after that, I'll have it hooked up, and I'll get into a game, and we we'll see what we can do with it. And I'll give my re my review at the end of that gameplay. All right, so this is the box that it came in. This is the the default packaging, the Net Duma R1 router. Uh, dominate lag, as you can see here. And um, that's what it's all about. I hope it's going to work on my connection. We'll see now when we get into the gameplay after we set it up. But this is the packaging. And um, the CEO asked me to what, let me let him know what I thought of the packaging. They're looking for feedback on that. It's it's quite simple. It's quite basic. And um, I, I I got an Astro A40 headset in the past, and uh, it had lots of packaging, lots of glossy stuff, and a hell of a lot going on with it. But you know, it's it's a lot of waste. This is looks like recycled cardboard. It looks it's plain and simple. It's no frills, and it looks like it does a job. All I'm interested in is what the router does. Does it dominate lag like it's supposed to? So the packaging. Let's open it up and let's have a gander. All right. So what we have here, first of all, is we have a quick start guide, so that it just shows us what ports are on the on the device itself, and uh, some instructions to follow on the back. So I, I'd imagine it's just plug and play anyway. These things generally are. We also got a, an adapter, just a, an adapter for the for the socket on the wall, basic. And we also got uh, this. It came extra with it. It's just a patch cable, uh, an Ethernet connection. You know those ones. Not sure if you can see it there. An Ethernet connection, but um, I use a MacBook Pro, so I'm not going to be uh, using that. And my my PlayStation Four is just it's under the desk. That cable is just too short. It wouldn't reach. Uh, my PS4 so I have a longer cable for that 
And here's the device itself. It's just a, a micro thick router board. I notice when uh, the engineers from my broadband company come and work on their devices, they they come in and uh, they are always using micro thick software. So um, this is the device itself. They obviously have their own firmware and all that on it to do all the stuff, all the magic stuff that it wants to do. But here it is. It's basic enough, nice and simple, nice and straightforward. The main thing is, does it actually work? Okay, so in the first part of this video I mentioned that I was going to do a gameplay with the device connected to show you what it was like. I'm not actually going to do that. That first part of the video was actually recorded several days ago and I've just been so busy between now and then that I haven't had a chance to finish the video. But I am going to do it now. Instead of showing a gameplay, I'm actually going to focus this section of the video on the device itself, the interface, the software, and how it all works. If you do want to see a gameplay with the device connected, uh, have a look on my channel at two videos previous to this. I think it's titled Black Ops 3 is Amazing. You'll get to see the device connected, what the gameplay is like, and uh, you'll hear my feedback from there on that video. I'm going to follow up with some more of the review at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. This is the main screen of the device. Once you go to the gateway address in your the URL of your browser, it's no different to any other router that you would have used in the past. You just type an IP address into the URL bar of your browser, and click the go button and you're taken into it. Now you do have to be connected to the device here already. Uh, I'm connected through Wi-Fi and I got the password for that Wi-Fi connection on a sticker on the device. It's a, serial, a part of the serial number. Uh, if you're a wired connection, you should get in here straight away. Uh, with that patch cable that I showed you at the start of the video, but I'm using the wireless connection here. Uh, on the left hand side we have all sorts of menus to get into all the various settings, but I'm not going to go through each and every one of those, I'm just going to show you the parts that matter to me, and the parts that have made my connection really, really good. You don't need to be an uber geek to be able to set this device up whatsoever. Uh, when you connect the device for the first time, it should automatically pop up a help tour that will help guide you along the process. It's very self-explanatory, very simple to set up. Uh, if the help tour doesn't automatically pop up, just click over here in the menu on the help tours section on the left hand side and click take the tour. And you'll see here that it pops up with 17 steps. We're on step one of 17 that we need to follow to set the device up properly. So I'll continue on the first one just to give you an example. Uh, step two here is all about your connection. We need to tell the device what uh, bandwidth we're expecting from our I ISP. And uh, in my situation, when I run a test on speedtest.net, I can see that I have six megabyte download speed, two megabyte upload speed, and a 68 ping. That's what it is at the moment. I go back to the device and I type in uh, 2 upload and 6 download, re representing megabytes, and I click continue there. Now I'm actually going to go through each of those settings and show you because I already have the device set up the way I want it, and I don't want to interfere with those. But that's where you uh, get the information to set the device up and configure it. It's very, very self-explanatory. Uh, there's loads of guides on the web, their own website, their forums are very helpful, but if you get stuck, Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section of this video and I'll do my best to help you or if not I'll point you in the right direction on the NetDuma website themselves. Uh, the device itself has numerous selling points. You can have DDoS protection through VPN, you can have network monitors, you can have device managers, you can have all sorts of stuff going on there. But the section that I'm mainly interested in is this one here called host filtering. If you click through to that, this is the one that has the most impact on me. And it's my favorite part of the device, and it's likely to be your favorite part as well. Basically, with host filtering, we choose the device that we want to apply the host filtering to, and uh, we provide some settings for that. So in my situation, I just want it to affect the PlayStation 4. So if I scroll down here to this Geo Filter section, it shows me a map of the world, and it shows me where uh, my connection is based. It, it geocodes my location to Ireland, which is true. Uh, I can fine tune that by clicking on this house icon and, and uh, really accurately pinpointing my location. But it's fine where it is. I'm located in the southeast of Ireland. I can zoom in on the map just to give you a better view. And I can close that again. And here we can see that here's what influences the geo filter or the host filtering. Uh, my location is there in, signified by that white map marker. But this circle, this radius around my location is currently set to 953 kilometers. I can widen that circle or I can shorten it. And what this means is any, I will only be allowed to connect to games or hosts that are actually physically located within that circle. With one exception. Uh, this ping assist feature, anyone that's outside of the circle with a connection greater or 
better than 30 milliseconds so less than 30 milliseconds uh, will be allowed to connect because they're deemed to have a quality connection now i can also s uh, slide that down to bring it down to someone that has a 20 millisecond connection or whatever you don't want to go too high with that i recommend about 30 uh, millisecond for ping assist and that's what netdoomer recommend themselves so you can play around the slider for distance yourself obviously you don't want to do it down to like one kilometer or five kilometers or whatever you want to have it uh, with a decent radius on it because uh remember not every single person in the world plays black ops 3 so uh as i look at my window for example there's cows in a field chewing grass like you know i'm not gonna be playing call of duty against them so <laughs> i need to widen the circle a bit and be a bit realistic about it so if i do it something like that 1067 kilometers we can see that i'll be playing anyone within ireland anyone within the uk parts of france no one in spain uh, barely a few people on the uh, west coast or west side of germany a couple of people in belgium netherlands but i will not be playing against people in italy united states asia saudi arabia africa norway i won't be playing against any of those so uh this this device is basic this is uh controlling your connection with ping mainly um with black ops 3 they use a hybrid matchmaking system 90 percent of the time it's uh it, they use dedicated servers but if the game feels that it needs a peer-to-peer -peer connection in a game to make the connection work for you it will switch to peer-to-peer -to -peer and the old way of matchmaking where you get lag and that in those games i do suffer with lag but in the matchmaking uh, where they're on the dedicated server i don't have the problem with lag the connection is extremely flawless and very smooth for me uh, so that's the ping assist or not the ping assist the host filtering section uh, it's my favorite section by far it's really really helped my connection big time uh, once you're playing a game uh, you'll see that the hosts pop up on the map i have the playstation open on the other screen beside me and i'm going to actually go to find match now go to core free for all and actually i won't go to core free for all i'll go to core team death match because there's most people play that mode there's 40 percent of people online playing that so I'm searching for a game on my PlayStation at the moment and you'll see that icons start popping up on the map in front of you now in a moment. It's scanning out, it's trying to find matches to connect to and here we can see the icons. Those icons with the yellow warning signs, they're hosts that it will not allow me to connect to. The red icons on the map are the hosts that it will allow me to connect to. So I'm in a lobby on the PlayStation here. I can see loads of people in it. I'm in a pre-game lobby and we can see that this large circle here on the map this is the host uh, the larger of all these circles means that that's the host of the connection and in this situation i know that that's a dedicated server because i've played on it in the past uh, once you get into a game and you've played it you can then rate the host by giving it a handle uh, so i can say that this was the uh, france north or whatever i wanted to call it and uh, oh a bit of a typo there whatever and you can say if it was uh, a good connection or a bad connection you can give it a rating you'll say it was 100 percent good or it was zero percent good and that will influence uh whether you play on that again if i say that was zero percent and i click on update it will get added down here to deny and allow and it won't allow me to connect to those servers or those hosts anymore in future um when you're playing the game it shows you a ping graph here as well to that host and it shows you what actually your actual current ping to that host is whether it's a dedicated server or another person playing the game so you can see i'm averaging around 70 milliseconds I'd, I'd estimate there and that correlates to my speed test from earlier on so that's a dedicated server connection and they're the ones you want to play on sometimes when you're on a peer-to-peer -peer connection this can be up to 400 300 200 whatever they're the games that you need to back out of and this is the graph that tells you to do how to do that and when to do it so um, I'm, I'm, I'm love, I, I love this part and this is the part of the, of the interface that you're going to be spending a lot of time with. I actually have this part of the, of the connection, or of the, sorry, not the connection. I actually have this part of the interface open on my laptop as I game to show me that the connection is good or bad or indifferent. Or if I need to rush a spawn or rush a, a BDOM, I, I'll, I'll do it if my connection is good. If my connection is pushing 100 ping or 150 ping, I won't push B. I'll, I'll go around and I'll flank or something like that. So, you know, you need to be intelligent with it as well. Another part of the device that I'd like to talk about is the congestion control. And what that is, is basically in your house or in your home, you're likely to have other people in your house using your network, sharing your Wi-Fi, whether you're a student in college or whether you've 
you have children like I have or whether you're sharing a house with a friend or whatever, they're likely to be streaming uh, YouTube or Netflix or possibly even porn, believe it or not. And uh, <laughs> if they are doing that, you can actually control the settings, the bandwidth, to only give them a minuscule amount of the connection while you take the lion's share for your gaming. Because let's face it, gaming is far more important than people streaming YouTube or researching for an exam or whatever like that, you know? So we're going to congestion control. And we can see this really nice interface. Uh, you have all sorts of settings which are explained here. You can click on the question mark and it'll show you what it's all about. Uh, I always leave it on this uh, preemptive uh, algorithm. You can do reactive as well. I'm not fully convinced about what all that means, but I have it set on this and this is what works for me. Uh, the download cap, I set it to 100% and the upload cap to another 100%. I, uh, I've tried different settings and 100% works better for me. Uh, device prioritization, this is really, really cool. Um, I, first of all, I, I'm a web developer. This, this interface that we're looking at in front of us, it's a website, a glorified website. I'm a website developer, and this is the bee's knees. They've done a really, really good job with this interface. I love it. But uh, this is really cool. Uh, we can see all the devices in the house that are currently connected, uh, either wired or wirelessly, to the NetDuma gaming router. And I can see here that my everyone has a share, an equal share of the connection. Everyone has 13%. But if I want to give the PlayStation uh, more of the connection, I can drag the slider and bring it up so I can give the PlayStation 80% of the connection. And every other device now only has 3% of the connection. <laughs> you know, so you can you can you can do that. It allows you to do that, and it's really really good. If I wanted to give any someone in the house uh, practically none of the connection, I can drag it up to 100%, and there we go. They're all cut off. But it doesn't necessarily work like that. If I just slide that back to 80% or 81% or whatever, 80%. Um, we will also uh, share our excess. So what it'll do is it will uh, use what it needs to use for the PlayStation and any of the excess of the connection that it doesn't use, it will return back to all the other devices. So if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to be completely greedy, you could untick that box, share excess, and everyone would be pr prevented from connecting. It's the quality of, of service in a normal router. This is the way they do it on this interface. So uh, it's a really, really handy feature. But uh, you want, once you make the setting, you click update and it'll update the setting. But uh, every day when you stop gaming, you want to make sure that you reset the distribution and uh, give everyone a line, or an equal share of it again. So uh, your, your PlayStation isn't hogging all the connection while you're trying to do, use it during the day or whatever for other reasons. The last part of the interface that I want to talk about is the network monitor over here on the left hand side. And what this is, is basically it analyzes all the devices that are currently connected to your uh, NetDuma gaming router, whether that's wireless or wirelessly. And it shows you which of those devices is using the most of your bandwidth. So you can see at the moment I'm using a cumulative total of 2.4 megabits per second. So um, we can see that the offender here is this device that's colored pink. You see that the graph is pink? If I scroll up, we can see that there's a device here uh, that's colored pink that matches the graph. And I know that that's my wife's laptop. My daughter is watching YouTube on that in the sitting room at the moment. So I would know that I need to go in there and I need to tell her to stop watching YouTube if I want to game. Or if I don't want to be that harsh, what I can do is I can go back to the congestion control setting and uh, manipulate that setting and uh, in the quality of service congestion control to make sure that she doesn't hog all the bandwidth by watching YouTube. So pay really close attention to that as well when you're gaming. Make sure there's not a lot of people hogging all of your bandwidth. Um, and that's it for this part of the video. Okay, so I've talked about all the settings and features of the router that I wanted to. There's a hell of a lot more settings on the device in all the menu options. Go through those if you wanted to, but uh, I personally just want to share what settings work for me. And I don't want to be too uber nerdy or geeky about it. Uh, I know what works and it's it's after improving my connection 100%. It's fan-fucking-tastic, if there's such a word. It's amazing. I fucking say that word quite a lot now, amazing. This device is amazing. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's quite possibly the best investment I've ever made. Would it be fair to say that? Yes, I, I, I think it would be fair. Obviously, I've paid 80 grand for a brand spanking new car, but in comparison for the the joy that this device gives me, 
I, I think it's it's one of the best investments I've ever made. Cost about 199 euro for something like that. I can't remember exactly. Small price to pay. Very worth it. If you're serious about your gaming, you need to get out there and get yourself one of these. It will solve all of your connection problems and you'll have no reason in the world, no excuse. I expect you all to be beasting if you get one of these devices like I am. And you're going to see a hell of a lot more videos on my channel because of this device and the, the joy that I'm having. The gameplays are great. I'm, I haven't got a nuclear yet, but I am getting close. And when I get my nuclear, you'll know all about it. Because uh, I don't think I ever got one of those in Black Ops 2, actually, you know, I think of it. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the moral of the story is you need to get yourself a NetDuma gaming router. 10 out of 10. The interface is fantastic. The device is very simple. No frills about it. It's the Ryanair of routers. The No Frills airline. The No Frills router. It's very simple. Very plain. But the, the inside. The Intel inside. No, not the Intel inside. The NetDuma inside. 10 out of 10 for software. I From one software developer. NetDuma, if you're watching this. From a website developer. Software developer. To other software developers. Other website developers. 10 out of 10. You hit the nail on the head. It's fantastic. I can't stress it enough. Get yourself a NetDuma gaming router. End of. Bye-bye.